there, and welcome to Grey Muzzle Geekery for the week of March 9th, 2020, episode 43. I'm Dusty Red, and with me as always... I'm Dusty White. And let's get into this week's news. News. Over the weekend, the Nintendo PlayStation sold for $360,000. Let me repeat that for anyone that might have focused on the price tag and not the console itself. The Nintendo PlayStation sold at an auction for $360,000 to Greg McClamore. 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 (laughs) Look, it's a Mick (laughs) McClamore. McClamore, who founded Pets.com and Toys.com during the dot-com boom. McClamore managed to outbid Oculus VR founder Palmer Lucky to claim the extremely rare prototype that was left of a failed partnership between Sony and Nintendo in 1991. The partnership was announced and soon fell through after 200 units of the Nintendo PlayStation was created. Though Valerie McKen... Another nickname. It's an appropriate month for this. I know. You know. <laughs> Oh, he's trying to steal me PlayStation Nintendo thingies. No, I will look at it. I mean, Valerie uh, McLecky, uh, consignment director of video games at Heritage Auctions, stated in a press release, the other 199 prototypes purported to exist were allegedly destroyed when the partnership between Nintendo and Sony was officially severed. And, though it isn't certain, it is possible that this unit narrowly uh, missed that fate. Afterwards, Sony focused their attention on their own line of consoles and released the first PlayStation in December of 1994. I want you to know, I was six in 91. There's a good (laughs) chance that some of our listeners even were born in 91. You're kind of forgetting. Gray muzzle. We're old. I like you trying to do this whole like, I'm young. I'm young. You're not young anymore. I'm not. No, I'm going to be 35 this year. I'm I'm like old dead. No, you're still pretty young. (laughs) Yeah. We, we still kind of get crap for calling ourselves gray muzzles when we're in our 30s. But at the same time, like, it's stuff like this that we've seen. It's stuff like this that we kind of focus on of... Nostalgia. Well, I remember having a Super Nintendo. I and, do, too. It's my <coughs> favorite. It's still my favorite console. Same here. High five, console. Woo! And they almost basically took... Because I kind of got into a mini rabbit hole finding about it because the story was kind of interesting. I wanted to look and find out, okay, wait, why I don't did, think I had ever heard it before that they had... Con- made a conglomerate. And I, and I vaguely heard about it, but I didn't like think anything of it. Only because, and again, going down the mini rabbit hole, <clears throat> uh, PlayStation and Nintendo had like an uneasy, I don't want to say alliance, but like Sony was big with its Walkman. It was like, it had really high quality TVs, but the Walkman kind of put it on the map for its CD capabilities. I remember it in my <clears throat> Raiders starter jacket with the skip protection. Of course you had a Raider starter jacket. Hey, silver and black were awesome colors. You mean a freaking Charlottesville Hornet jacket <laughs> was where it was at. <laughs> That's right. I actually had a Bears one because I, 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 you know, I'm proud of my city. and, and I was does. not. I mean, I was from the South. I about to say, what do you have? The, the Springfield Six Shooters. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I can remember the Sony Walkman and that be and and I might have, you know, shanghaied it for my brother, but yes. And you had to walk with it like a delicate pizza, so any step <laughs> would make the, the track skip. And Listen, you're... it made Barbie Aqua, you know, Barbie Girl uh-huh. by Aqua sound better skipping. I don't know. Did you ever hit so hard where it just skipped the entire track? Oh, yeah. Like, we definitely had it in, like, the car. I think it was with my dad. We'd, like, go over these train tracks back in the old neighborhood and, like... We'd go a little quick sometimes, and he'd be like, boom, 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 and the whole track just skipped. I'm like, well, I <laughs> can't tell mom that one. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, so ultimately, Sony at the time had like kind of its grasp on the Walkman, and in turn had its grasp on CD like technology. Was right. able to condense several hundred megabytes of data onto a CD, whereas at this time, you know, consoles were still running. At the time, what, uh, Super Nintendo was a 16-bit system? Mm-hmm. Or 32-bit? Cause, no, it was 16, because then uh, <clears throat> uh, Nintendo 64 
was their, like, their next big one. Yeah. I think they made the leap, though. Because Nintendo was 8, and Super Nintendo was 16. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. It's always doubling up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, but anyway, the big thing about that is they wanted to, like, have a partnership to go, hey, you could cram all this data on the CD, so we're going to make an attachment. And if anybody remembers, like, the Sega CD and all the other stuff where you put the Sega Genesis on there, <clears throat> they wanted to come up with a thing basically similar to, to, and I think... Super Nintendo was 32 because Sega Genesis was 16. You were all over the place. <clears throat> my, memory's, no, I, my memory's on a line here. And I remember because Sega Genesis was 16 and then uh, Super Nintendo went 32 and then Nintendo 64. I can there. hear that start boot up screen. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway. Sega. Oh, the commercials like Sega. Yeah, that one. Saturn. I remember that. And then Dreamcast. Which, anyway, <laughs> long story short, the big thing was is that there was a press conference in 92 that was like the big ex like the exposition of like what e3 would be today pretty much. equivalent and on the friday night sony like unveiled their their system like hey we're, par- we're partnering with nintendo we're gonna have this attachment that goes with a, like a super like an advanced super nintendo like here we are and the next freaking day Nintendo came out, was like, lol, we already made a partnership with Philips to use their CD program, like their CD system, to basically make our own st- style of system with our own proprietary software. Uh, ha ha, Sony got you. And then, like, decided to kind of go forward with Nintendo, but eventually, like, split off anyway. They're like, no, nah, they kind of screwed us. You Japanese are very proud like that. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you got us. <clears throat> we'll forfeit some more of our rights, and we still want to partner with you. Eventually, Sony went, no, you know what? F this. We're going to do our own system. And then in 1994, this Nintendo, Play- or, uh, uh, Nintendo PlayStation, no, the Sony PlayStation came out. And it has led, for the last 20 years, every Nintendo product. Right. So as good as Nintendo are for all the Game Boys and the Wiis and the, the Switch and everything else. It has its own. <sighs> you will never see Mario on PlayStation. Well, no. You, those, you, those are, you those ha- are But I'm saying, stuff. you've got... you. Dev- but those are development deals that will never be with another. Oh, for sure. But that's not the console. issue. But the issue isn't the development deals. The issue is the the technology behind it. Sony has gone hardcore game. Right. Like that's what they. Have. We're a gaming system. Nintendo getting its butt whooped is by like now an well, entertainment it got, system. It got its butt kicked by PlayStation One, and it made a logical jump to go. We need to focus on the fun of games rather than the power of games. Because at that okay. point, then Xbox came that. out, and then Xbox went, well, we're going to compete with power too. That's why you see Xbox and PlayStation being like... The bigger competitors <laughs> against each other now. But why, why are they the big Nintendo's competitors? Nintendo's just kind of but, off by its own. But why are they the competitors? What about them? Look, look at what to, what they market to. They market to the later teenager, the 20-year-old, the college kids playing Halo, playing... <clears throat> Call of Duty. Call of Duty, those kind of games. That's their market. That's their Gears of War. We can't leave out our, our Gears Bride out there. <laughs> Th- those kind of games that are much more gamer focused. Focus, where Nintendo went, we're going to focus on play. We're going to focus on this because I, for one, believe that they looked and went, we are getting our butts kicked. We need to make a marketing strategy to go into this direction. Okay. And so they had console, like, the handheld type stuff, which works perfect. Like, you can't really do cartridges. Because even the Nintendo Switch is still a cartridge-based game. I mean, it's miniature cartridges, but they still use a cartridge-based system. It's not a disc. Well, they did... Didn't they have a disc for a while? No, they had the GameCube. PS1. They had GameCube. Oh, yeah. They okay. had the mini disc. Got it. <clears throat> but it still just never was... Big. But nowadays, it's kind of irrelevant, I guess, because everything's downloaded and streamed anyway. Right. But at the end of the day, you're still putting full games before internet. Before high-speed internet was so easily accessible, everything had to be onto a CD, and then you uploaded your patches. And I even said it earlier when we were talking about it that even even on CDs, these games ended up being two to four discs <coughs> long. First Resident, Resident Evil, Evil was... Uh, <coughs> It's, you know, you'd get that cut screen and it'd be like, insert disc two to carry on so-and-so's story. Yeah, but you didn't have to deal with what I had to deal with. You didn't have to get 
30 something floppy disks, which oddly enough are hard disks and hard disk floppy disks, but 30 something hard uh, floppy disks installing Elder Scrolls Daggerfall on your computer. I walked <clears throat> to school uphill 15 miles both ways. And we were thankful for it. <laughs> So as of March 6, 2020, <clears throat> South by Southwest 2020 has been canceled due to the coronavirus. The annual tech, music, and film meetup held in Austin, Texas is the latest major conference to be canceled due to the coronavirus outbreak, just one week before it was slated to start. This is the first time in the event's 34-year history that it has been canceled. I've issued an order effectively cancels South by Southwest. Austin Mayor Steve Adler said, referencing an emergency order put in place on Friday that will result in a harsh blow to the city's economy. South by Southwest brings in hundreds of millions of dollars in tourism, ticket sales, and other revenue streams, with last year's festivals raking in a cool $355 million for the city of Austin. In fairness, there has been growing concerns by organizers and major companies who have all cited health concerns and internal company policies related to non-essential travel restrictions that were put into place to help reduce employee risk of illness. As of Monday, March 9th, South by Southwest announced officially that they are exploring options to reschedule the event, as they are also trying to figure out how to deal with potential refunds, as they are stating that the cancellation was not on their part, but rather enforced by the city of Austin. I did see that it's not being covered by insurance. Correct. So <clears throat> I, I know for a couple of uh, reasons, I know a lot of job conferences have also been canceled mm -hmm. for the same thing or vendors have been pulling out for the same reason. A lot of planes are flying at lower capacity as far as like <laughs> you, you, wanted, cough, <laughs> you cough, you get into the special line. <laughs> uh, if you want to fly real super cheap right now, that's what you could find, like supply and demand. But it's definitely they, they want to fill seats because people aren't flying. Right. <clears throat> but and they kind of need to send the planes out regardless. Right. It's kind of like a bus system. Like you're sending the plane out, but you don't want to send it empty because you're just losing money. So everybody get on board. Right. I'm kind of shocked that it's gotten to this level of maybe I just live in my own hybrid bubble. I don't know that it would go to this length to be able to cancel something so big and pop culture centric as South by Southwest. That just seems <clears throat> like really serious to me, I guess. I mean, it sounds silly and the, the fat is already over, but I know there's a lot of like, boomers floating around right now but it's kind of a serious health concern if you're a little on the older side it's back to the SARS virus it's back to the swine flu and everything else like yeah if you're reasonably healthy and you have insurance or you have access to you know clean water and all these other things then you'll for the most part be okay right but if you're dealing with poor hygiene or if you're dealing with poor just amenities be the right. easiest way to do it <clears throat> or just getting older with aging health or you're just an infant or younger with again um, uh, a not immune developed issue, immune system, issues yeah. yeah then yeah this could become immediately dangerous and if you're dealing with a lot of these companies that are owned by 50 year old six year old probably six year old white guy <laughs> like they're they're it, taking it as a serious a serious threat it's because it affects them right well, we're just like, yeah, we'll go to South by Southwest. Okay, some dude sneezed on me. I'm going to get a little sick. Like, I mean, chances are I'll live. <laughs> I was going to say, our immune systems are probably <clears throat> a little bit more uh, used to it since we go to cons and things like that. And you do have a lot of, you know, hey, I'd love to shake your hand or I'd love to, uh, you know, nice to meet you. But you got a lot of like fist bumping and elbow, <clears throat> elbow tapping because you don't want to get the con crud. Like, I wonder if that's a little bit more, like, not not acceptable, but a little bit more reasonable because people do go to con, like, in furry communities and things like that, or geek communities, they go to con, and we know what con crud is. I mean, it's what, not nearly as, you know, vibrant or violent. Well, I mean, I mean con, con crud is nothing more than just another form of cold, cough, illness, sickness, minor flu, all these other things. Like, there's so many viruses, it's impossible to, well, not impossible, clearly the CDC has a list of them. Right. But at the end of the day, it's still a case of 
something as major as the coronavirus, which has seemingly got a longer lifespan or is a little bit more dangerous, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like I'm no, I'm no health expert. Let's call a spade a spade here. I'm no health expert. I'm not a, a member of the CDC. I just know what I read and from what I read, like it's got a two percent mortality rate. It's still a skewed number because it's mostly affecting old Older and young or, or sick. So those numbers are skewed. But at the end of the day, it's still a 2% mortality rate. Like right. that's, that's a, a, that's that's, a that's number. A respectable number. That's, uh-huh. that's like, okay, that's, that's a large number. That said, it's also a lot of different countries that, again, may not have the same benefits and, and, and amenities that we have. So I don't know. But there, there could be other amenities, correct? So there are some days that I wish wine flowed from the faucet. Had I been in a northern Italian town named Castelvetro, that's exactly what happened last Wednesday. What had happened was (laughs) a faulty valve in the washing circuit within the bottling line, Lambrusco Grasparosa, a local specialty wine, seeped through the town's water lines due to its pressure. The glitch lasted about three hours and sadly only affected about 20 homes. But this provided a moment of levity to a town that in the midst of the Corona crisis, which since the outbreak has shut down more than 80% of its tourism hotspots at a time where we have had little to smile about. I'm glad we brought some laughs to others stated Gio Mascaqui, the owner of Katina Setkani winery. Hopefully someday they will remember us and come and visit. Free wine! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that? Just waking up and being like, okay, I'm going to start my day. Uh, get, get, start, you know, shaving. Look at yourself in the mirror. Get into the, the shower. No, here's the problem. <laughs> as much as that would look like a horror scene. Right. You're going to wonder why your coffee tastes funny this morning. Because you don't pay attention to I the don't. water. You just start pouring and pouring. And all of a sudden, like... Suddenly, my wine, my my coffee tastes like uh, it's been aged in a wine barrel. I don't know if you'd notice though. Knowing you, you just roll in the work with a big old smile, like <laughs> great. I'm feeling awesome today. Why isn't everybody else as happy as me? Uh, the owner did state that some of the locals did call them and say, "Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I'm bottling this. Mm. Like, talk about bathtub wine. Oh, badum." <laughs> I mean, three hours worth of it, and you realize that it's, hey, I turned my faucet on, and it's wine, wine, and it's a local specialty, so, I mean, I'm sure it's probably not, like, their rarest vintage, No, especially if it's in the bottling line. This is some, this is like a straight up skit out of, like, Monty Python, where somebody's, like, praying for good fortune, he turns on his faucet, like, come on, even, even Jesus had a couple glasses, this guy's, like, turning on faucets of wine, like. (laughs) Make make way, Jesus. <laughs> Giuseppe's in town. <laughs> so to go on with our our wine or beer centric com- comment <coughs> here, booze maha. A booze. <laughs> Behemoth Brewery, Giant Galleon Brewery, or Mesopotamia Meadery. All possible names they could have used for a five thousand year old yeast has anything to do with the beer. A research and development department has been working with Hebrew University to find investors who would be interested in commercializing the ancient brew. Basically, pots that were first excavated from former biblical city of Gath, home of the mythical giant Goliath, had beer found in them. Ale that would have originally been produced from several grains, such as millet, corn, sorghum, and wheat, This yeast was extracted and used in a much more modern beer-making product. The beer took about eight weeks to ferment, less time than they were expecting since the yeast laid dormant from a thousand years. Huh. Yeah. Mummy beer. So some of the... (laughs) Mummy. (laughs) Okay, you got me. (laughs) Uh, Some of the taste testers range from really interesting... Fruity, like nuts and bananas, unique, but went down like oil, oh. to burned bread. I mean, I'm down with anytime. Okay, let, let, this goes back to the anytime you tell somebody to calm down, it doesn't help. Anytime you describe something as interesting, 
generally isn't a ringing endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> but it does pique my interest. Even when we go to breweries now and you happen to order something that maybe somebody else wouldn't order and you, you do try it. <laughs> And that's kind of your lasting only for mouthfeel is interesting. Only, only for you, though, because at that point, it needs to at least have like an ABV of 15 plus. So <laughs> that seems to be your trend lately. Mm. But they gave the, they gave me my drink in an itty bitty Dixie cup. Yeah, because it's 20% dumb dumb. <laughs> Gonna you knock me down. You sippy, sippy, sippy. <laughs> Not, it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that they found you know, obviously use processes to bring it about and like any yeast and anything else, once you activate it again and get it to live. Right. Um, and you get it cultured, I guess. You give it a book, let it read, grow up, you know, culture it. Um, <laughs> give it some bifocals. Oh, okay. Okay. Bloomer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to run. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to run into <laughs> Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not supposed to laugh that bad. No, you're not. Oh no. Um, you're running into the issue of like <laughs> maybe they'll be able to do something with it to alter the taste or alter it to maybe mix it with other yeasts or do something with it. Because at that point then, if you even if you mix it with some other yeast or have it with it and you just use a little bit of it. It, it becomes a super selling gimmick of like, made, I could say made I had 5,000 year old uh, yeast. Right, when exactly. Realistically, it's so diluted through the lineage. <laughs> Instead of zombie dust, you get mummy dust. Oh, uh, zombie dust. Uh, I mean, hey, Three Floyds, I, I respect your commitment to the hops, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> just, just, it's dust by the time it hits your mouth. Uh, <laughs> Called <it> zombie fart. <laughs> 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 and that concludes this week's news. News. So before we go on to our usual topics, why don't we do some house cleaning? Housekeeping? House, yeah. No, no, you buy. No, you, 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 you buy. You, you buy pledge. Me, me, me fluff pillow? <laughs> so we do have a couple of dates we'd like to announce. Um, we are upon Ooh, for What's us. his name? Ha, 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 ha. Not funny. Her name. Uh, oh. <laughs> I hate you. Um, so our LARPing adventures, adventures are starting to, uh, are going to be happening soon. I know the weather's warming up a little bit. <laughs> I, I know we've had a couple of one days that unfortunately for Southern Michigan Alliance, we haven't been able to make. Um, but, however, at the end of this month, the Friday, t- March 27th, 28th, and 29th, we will be present for the first weekend, full weekend event for Southern Michigan Alliance. And that will be at Jackson, Michigan, in Jackson, Michigan. And if you want to find more information on this, simply go to www.alliancesouthmichigan.com. That's www.alliancesouthmichigan.com. There you'll be able to find the schedule, you'll be able to find the forums, you'll be able to find ideas of what to expect for your first event and whatnot. And again, that'll be the weekend of March 27th through to the 29th in Jackson, Michigan, um, which means... Listener questions. We'll be taking listener questions again and... For our roadcast. Do our roadcast, so you guys get to hear the very poorly audio... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll have some idea on how to like edit that the sound of Weep. <laughs> Weep. No, if it's raining, we're not gonna be able to do it. That's true. And more, most likely it will be it'll probably snowing though with our luck. But anyway, yeah, so obviously if you want to submit listener questions, we will be doing our roadcast at some point, or maybe just an at home cast on Sunday when we get a chance to kind of recover and, and we not always have to do, think. We always do like doing a recap of our event and our adventure, like our in game adventures and um, you know, where where our namesakes come from, Dusty Red and Dusty mm-hmm. White, go adventuring through the woods. So be sure to check that out. And again, any kind of listener questions, you could find us on our Discord. You could email us at graymuzzlegeekery at gmail.com. Or you can find us on Facebook at Grey Muzzle Geekery. And uh, drop us a line, drop us your questions, whatever else you want to know. It could be pertaining to our experiences. It could just be a burning conundrum that was on your head and something that could turn into a topic about our ramblings 
And if you ever want to talk to us on a daily basis or see some of our Patreons in verbal discord, come check us out on our Discord app as well, in our Discord room. And now, Adventure Awaits. Adventure Awaits! So, this week, or this past week, we happened to get a chance um, to meet up with Brian Ibbett, which was our host for the American Next Top Podcaster uh-huh. competition. Ibbett. Ibbett. <laughs> Ibbett. I mean, Ibbett. <laughs> He happened to be in town for a major tr- trivia, bar trivia competition. No. And his his team did, unfortunately, place 10th out of 230 teams. So which, I didn't know that because you were listening to the, the, the morning stream. The I was. Show, and, like, mentioned to me, of like, oh, yeah, he didn't do too well. He came in 10th place. And I'm thinking of, like, <laughs> 12, 15. Ooh, that's not good. 10th of 200 plus is... Pretty freaking good. Well, he did, he does go on to say that it's only the top five end up placing money. Sure. So you you want to obviously place money. His his original team in 2011 and 2014 <clears throat> were the, the winners. So for their team, they're a little bit more sure, competitive than your average, hey, let's go play beer trivia on Tuesday night. I don't know. We've seen some beer trivia on Tuesday night and bitches brought crock pots and set up <laughs> like... You want to talk about competitive. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, but we, we ended up in downtown Chicago at a location. A beer cave called Headquarters. Headquarters. And what do you think, Red? I mean, it wasn't until uh, later when one of our listeners told us that it was a, uh, a former um, replay. Well, no. Or replay used replay to be a Replay used to okay. more more of the replays <clears throat> used to be headquarters. And the headquarters are now just two locations, one in Chicago, one in Nashville? I think so. I think it's Nashville. And so I've been to a replay. So it's got that same vibe. You walk in, arcade machines, everything else. It was pretty cool. Like I like that it was still a brewery, had a lot of beers. Had a lot of like custom beers on on tap, which is really cool. Um food was pretty tasty. Yeah. I had wings. I had a corn, Giant a corn, corn dog. dog that was really good with like horseradish mustard, which you usually see horseradish mayo more than you see horseradish mustard. Yeah, but I think a horseradish mustard would be perfect for a corn dog. The yeah, it's very anything, good. It's, it, it, I, I, normally, I'm not a huge fan of horseradish. I took a bite of that. I was like, yeah, I might have chosen poorly. But man, that cereal killer drink. All right. Yeah, did you ever like snap a picture of the, the recipe or anything? Uh, no. Uh, but it did. I mean, it was essentially cinnamon toast cinnamon crunch. crunch. It wasn't essentially cinnamon toast crunch. If you would have just poured me a glass of that and poured some like with a spoon, I'd been like, why is it liquid? And you would have <laughs> ate it. I would have been toasted out of my mind watching Saturday morning cartoons. But hey, it would have been worth it. <laughs> Uh, I really enjoyed it. I liked that it was um, a little bit more open than the replays we've been to in the past. I know we've been to two. Um, it, it replay seems to like almost crunch everything in. I think with the the notion of food being served, you need space more for space. waiters. Yeah, that's very you got, true. You got tables and everything else, so keep that in mind. That's very true. <laughs> there were games galore, lots of pinball. It's all free to play. I think the only thing that weren't weren't free to play was a Stranger Thing um, pinball and the air hockey. I think those are the only two that weren't free to play. I didn't actually see. I I thought there was a lot more quarter machines and stuff like that, like for stuff to play. I don't quote me on it, but yeah, I do know that uh, the bubble hockey was the big one that it, our, yeah. friend, our friend Rishi. Was uh, oh, the really ANTP it. first season? Yeah, Rishi from uh, America's Next Top Podcaster season one. He was there to see Brian as well, so we got to meet up with him because we've talked on on their Discord a little bit. Right, and just kind of, you know, he always kind of poked some fun here and there and dealing with our sorrows because he went through it already. Right, and to see us go through it, like I'm kind of looking forward to seeing season see, three. three see, seeing what they change for season three, I may just. So Discord on the Discord and just get new people nervous. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. Are you oh. going to be the season two, like, post-read? I'm going to scare people, like, early. When they come in, like, oh no, you can't wear green, even behind the mic. Like, jury would know. Like, <laughs> just, just make up just weird. Just make up stupid things and see who buys it. Like, <laughs> But smattering some truth with there, so you don't know if I'm messing with them or not. 
Right. Absolutely. And uh, so we we hit the beercade and we kind of hung out. We met with Ibit and got to kind of, for me anyway, get to meet someone that I've listened to for many many years before I picked up the mic or got are. put in front of the mic or something. Nervous. I was nervous. I don't know why. I was glad to have a few of our our friends and our Patreon listeners show up to kind of support us. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know why I was nervous. I'm not usually the type of person that gets nervous in a public setting, but I think it was kind of like for me meeting a it's a lesser celebrity. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I want to say lesser. I make it sound bad, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it is a form of celebrity or is a form of somebody that I've listened to for a long right. time and I enjoy. Somebody you know a lot of, but they don't know anything about you, right? So you have that awkwardness. Of... But podcasting almost <clears throat> has that that effect on people. Is and and I listen to a lot of podcasts that even talk about it. That you listen to these people talk, like you and I, or um, you know, my favorite murder. Don't don't like compare that. us with them. No, I'm just saying is <laughs> no, you, we're something completely different. You listen to those people, and you get a sense of a their personality. You get a sense of oh, I could totally talk to these people in real life and sure. have something in common with them, and you get almost a friendship with them. Even even some of our listeners that write into us have some commonalities with us and and talk to us or ask us questions as as if we were meeting face to face podcasting has that ability to do uh to do that and i just was really excited to meet him and i would have loved to have gone to vegas in two weeks but but again it's the same weekend as our first event so yes i'm going to go larping instead yeah it is my therapy sorry brian (laughs) (laughs) uh I just I I was excited to meet him and just kind of experience a basically a tadpole meetup in face to face, which I probably would have never have done before, but because we did the competition, I felt comfortable showing up. And he sure sure as heck recognized us right away, and you know hugged us as if we had, were you know old as friends if he meeting. tortured us. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was more the judges that tortured us than, yeah, than him. <clears throat> but it was it was a good experience, and I definitely would do it again. Come the next time any of them <clears throat> hit, it, it hit Chicago. I mean, and I'm I'm in a unique position because I don't listen to the morning stream. I don't follow the Frog Pants Network and everything else. Like I'm, I really don't listen to podcasts a whole lot, as you could tell from my. From the way I do a podcast, clearly I don't listen to professionals. So it's a case <laughs> of um, I didn't know who he was except from the show, right. from, from the contest. So I'm just meeting a dude who's just like, hey, dance for me, monkey, dance. And I did my dance and got told, you didn't dance good enough. Go home now, bye. So meeting him in person was like, Dancing All right. equals editing? I don't... Oh, Are you editing this episode? Probably not. All right, then. Let's continue on. So I'm telling you, I'm still stick with it. I, I followed the letter. I was told <laughs> to edit it in a specific way, and I did it. It is a hill in which you were planning to die on. Oh, I died on it. I straight up died on that <laughs> hill, and I'm okay. My flag is there. It's a big middle finger with a smiley face. So be it. But, um... I mean, if you still want to have your own individual contest of editing something, like we could put something together for our listeners. Nah, I'm good. I mean, I've got enough of your bloopers to make you basically say anything I want you to say, my dear. <laughs> Dusty Red is the sexiest thing I've ever seen. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, like I said, the guy, I didn't really know him much. So I, I guess in a stroke of luck. Um, you weren't nervous? I weren't nervous. It was like, all right, big dude. All right. I mean, cool. That's Brian. Nice to meet you. Cool. Yeah. And then it was just, I guess, the weirdness of seeing his fans, the tadpoles, they call them, around him because, like, they're just like, yeah, I listened to this and I listened to this. And I'm just like, I, I mean, I. But they I, knew who you were. Some of them. Some of them did. They, I, which is also weird in its own right. Right. They're like, oh, you're in season two. I'm like, I was, I was. Hi, I was. Nice to meet you. <laughs> It's kind of like being, have you ever had the experience in game where you you introduce yourself as Dusty Red in a uh, LARP type situation and had somebody go, I've heard of you. That's how we met. <laughs> like 12 years ago or something, 15 oh, years ago. Oh, longer than that. Oh, yeah, Way 15? longer than that. 15, right? I've 17? been playing for 17, so it was within my first year. So oh. 17, 16 years ago. So that's when we first met. It was about 16 years ago. 
And yeah, they sat us next to each other. And you've heard of me and saw me and they sat you next to me because oh, we're both named Dusty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I get that a little bit at conventions though. Oh, that's fair. Because like, you're a little bit more recognizable in your suit and... Between the suit, between working between with the Dragon show. show and the Dungeons and Dragons and all that. So there was a level of people will see and they'll be like, oh, you're him. Uh, I am him. He is me. I expect- we be me. I expected you to be taller. Not me. No, they know I'm short. <laughs> Everybody knows me. They look at me like, I thought you were shorter. <laughs> You actually are five four. Anyway, so we we said our goodbyes to the beercade. We took off and we went on an adventure to go to King's Cup. And normally, from what we've been told from some of our friends, is King's Cup is more of a like a medieval times, not times, medieval, medieval theme. Medieval theme. Don't call it medieval Sorry. times. Just, Sorry, but you get but you get to the main door and there's like a suit of armor sitting outside. Right. So it gives you an idea of like, oh, okay, cool. The place named King's Cup. There's a suit of armor, big doors. So you're like. Okay, so this is going to be a, a different, like a different experience. We were we were set up for a different experience, but how we showed up and we arrived, and it was not what we had been told it was going to be. It was an experience, but it happened to be another experience popped up when we weren't expecting it. Ha 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 ha! It was Wizard of Oz themed. Got a pop up Wizard of Oz theme, and I don't mean pop up as in like, let's just throw some like blankets over the thing and like pretend this like fully decked out green like the best way I can put it because I don't want to say green streamer because that doesn't paint the picture prom background glittery green tendrils of tinsel basically Oz was like sticker uh, like Oz stickers was all over the green walls they had giant heads of Dorothy, the <clears throat> Scarecrow, the Tin the Man, tin man the lion. lion. They had a, a witch in a corner. They had a full-fledged like house basically lit floating up in, in green, yeah. floating in the <laughs> air. They obviously were playing the Wizard of Oz on loop. Couldn't hear anything, but the Wizard of Oz on loop. And had their normally... Uh, throne, but it all decked out in Wizard of Oz behind it, the the wizard himself. And it and just... And it was a giant wizard. They had the poppies, giant wizard head. red and black poppies yep. on the, the ceiling. It was so... And their, their menu was also all geared toward yes. it. The scarecrow on fire and all the these other things. The burning scarecrow. The burning scarecrow, there it is. They had, all their, they had their drinks where it was stirred or shaken or I think... Bigger drinks that were made for multiple people. Yeah, kind of like a party. Party drinks. Kind of like the uh, the speakeasy we were at at uh, Norcut. Yeah. Kind of had that same vibe of like. If you, you order could, this. Yeah, if you order this, like it's going to be like $70. But it's for eight. Yeah. Six to eight people. Yeah, it's for enough people that everybody gets a drink. So if you're willing to just chip in, you also get a different experience because right. there's more to it. You either get to pour it yourself or it's got You dry had all the bartenders or- in the back doing like their shakes and their flair <laughs> or whatever. I just really was blown away by the, the intricacy of detail at this location. <laughs> And I've been to one other pop-up bar, which ironically we were talking about earlier, which was Replay, and it was the King of uh, Game of Thrones pop-up. Like King of Games? King King of Games. (laughs) Wrong. Meh. We went to that pop-up bar, and it was during the day, so it wasn't nearly as decked out. And it was a bigger, bigger location. It was also, like, was around for a while. Yeah. So some of the props were damaged. Some of the stuff was kind of like... You know, just it had okay, some wear. It had, yeah. some wear. it had some wear to you it. You took a picture and then you moved on. Yep. <laughs> but this was just really nicely decked out. It was Friday evening. We sat at, uh, we, we got sat right away. There was, uh, happened to be an open table as soon as we walked in. And it just was a really pleasant experience. And we had, I don't think there was a bad drink at the, served all night. I, I don't think there was a bad drink. There was definitely some drinks I didn't care for. Which one? Um, I think that second burning scarecrow that I had because they had two different burning scarecrows. Oh, they had the rum one, and then <clears throat> I ended up with the actual. Uh, the rum one I had that small little tall skinny one. glass one. Yeah, it was okay. The bourbon one I didn't care for that much. Oh, so it had much that. more of a sour or something else I wasn't prepared for. Um, I'm willing to bet that my taste buds are a little off right now because I've been basically eating nothing but halls cough drops for the last like two weeks and 
you know, <clears throat> slathering yourself in vapor robe. Okay, look, leave me in my vapor robe. Alive, right? <laughs> and then I bought some cough drops made of like basically was cubed vapor rub, and it was. <laughs> I, I was like, ha ha, okay, Vicks made a cough drop, uh, they're naming it vapor rub. Like, you just made edible vapor rub. <laughs> and the concept of edible vapor rub is on par with edible underwear. But you just don't want to do it. It's not. It's, the idea might sound kind of neat and interesting. It's, no. <laughs> on that note, I think Adventure Await kind of goes away now. But we have more important things to talk about. Maybe a rabbit hole, maybe a uh, a, a, a nerd card being gained. How we want to talk about this one? Let's do our down the rabbit hole. I feel like I I kind of shoved you forcefully down it, but let's let's take the ride. Insert rabbit hole noise here. So, sadly, Red, I did not realize when we were going <clears throat> to go to the furcon that was geared towards this topic that you had not seen all of the movies and which I movies I speak of are Harry Potter movies. And considering the one that we went to was actually fantastic brews and where to find them at uh, motor city furcon in 2019. Correct. So I have, I have seen fantastic beasts. You had, but I haven't seen the. I don't one. even consider that really a reboot because you go, you have. Well, it's not to a reboot ki- at all. You kind of have to go in with a base understanding, which I guess you got because you had seen at least the first two movies. I have seen the first two movies. More importantly, I am also a creature of social networking and just social life. Fake it till you make it. Well, I never fake it. I never <laughs> faked it though. Like I took the Pottermore test. I may have changed since then just because, I mean, people are complex. And again, I always go with the I am a very scientific thought of I will believe something until I am proven wrong. And then I will believe that next thing. Like, I'm I'm scientific method, man. Prove it to me. Okay, well, so unless I'm going to you give me proof, I'll flip on a goddamn dime. But until then, I'm going to stand my ground. So I tested his Ravenclaw. So I was like, okay, well, they're kind of witty and whatnot. So I'll go with that. And then, um, I forgot what my stupid wand was. Some you know, I don't remember. You, I think I it was don't. a phoenix core or something like No, it was a dragon heart string. It was a dragon, yeah, whatever. And then, um, my Patronus was a tiger. Rawr, tigre. <laughs> <clears throat> so, we went to the Furcon. We had a good time, and sure. you wore the colors as, as I did. <coughs> I am, um... Slytherin. Slytherin, and I will... Stay, stay to this day that I just am too sassy to be Gryffindor. And I kind of like helped you along with some of some of the... Okay, I'm, a, I'm of the notion that the word success is parcel tongue anyway. So continue. Uh, <laughs> so uh-huh. we stumbled along and, and you were fine. But recently over the last month or so, I kind of forced you to watch the movie because here here's how getting red to watch something works okay when you pull out the handcuffs i was kind of excited and then (laughs) (laughs) and then realized they were for something else (laughs) for our listeners at home red is a little hard to get to watch something for anything longer than a half an hour so we'll sit down for dinner we'll eat something and that's about as much attention span as i have from the add kid over here so I happened to just be like, hey, sit, press play. And then I have his attention for an hour and a half. <laughs> I literally got movie. Three amb- hours. I literally got movie ambushed. Yes. Like I happen, but. But as soon as this. it's on, you're good. But it's just getting you to that point. So there's oh. something about the process of like putting in it. Like there's a mental thing that I have trouble with of putting in the DVD, sitting down, getting popcorn. And some people love that. Like you are like, like. Popcorn's getting done. Get, like you've mentally prepared yourself for the next two and a half to three hours. I think that's more of what your <clears throat> issue is. Is you can't you can't get over. Oh wait, I'm not going to be physically doing anything or producing anything within this next two and a half hours of my life. What waste? Like I can't do this. But once you have it on, you're like, okay, I'm in. And I hyper focus because I also am a believer. One of my pet peeves are people who sleep through movies. If like. If I'm going to sit down and put my focus on this, because I can't multitask. I'm bad about that. 
See, and that's my I I multitasked through all of grade school. Ugh. Music had to be on. I could do homework. The TV could be on. I could have a conversation. Oh, I, I am a you. multitasking I, I, pro. I I can multitask, but if I need to think or need to focus, again, what Harry Potter to me it was something that I knew that if I was going to watch it, I need to focus. Like case in point. The the show uh, show Netflix show Altered Carbon recently came out and I want to see that, but I know I can't do that if I've got another if I got a game going and I got it on like a second monitor, I I can't do that. I will absolutely miss something, especially in a show like that that has like details you need to pay attention uh-huh. to, which goes back to Harry Potter. <clears throat> As an adult, I thought, and this is why we're talking about it. Ultimately, I am an adult. Who is a big fan of fantasy genre and of the of games and movies and everything to kind of do with the genre. And I was uneducated in the world of Pottermore and of J.K. Rowling's the fantasy world. I had I, I didn't poo-poo them. I'm not against them. In fact, my sisters grew up on them because they fell into that range when when it came out, they were 10 and 12 and 16 and like they were they grew up on it they grew up on harry potter to the point of and i made this kind of with you in the car if you got to read the books as they came out and saw the movies as they came out and finished off with the last one deathly hollows 2 you are in a very unique niche group of people there will never be anyone like you again And I think, and I made a correlation to it just as we originally spoke almost a year ago about the Marvel Universe coming to a 10-year crescendo. And and they don't count with comics because obviously the Marvel Universe is its own entity. So we got to see the Marvel Universe happen like that. And anybody else now, same thing, and we'll go back to Potter. Anybody that wants to get into Harry Potter can read all the books immediately. Anybody, like in my case, and I will say freely... There's a level of, I don't want to say jadedness, but unattachment that I had because I started the movies and within a month I had seen all eight movies. Right. So there was none of this like, oh, you this had happens, to wait or, or a character the, death. Or wait, or November's arc. coming along. That means there's a new Harry Potter movie coming. There wasn't ha- there wasn't any No build up, no anticipation, yeah. no, no wait. So anybody that got to go through that, consider yourselves fortunate, consider yourselves lucky. Honestly. Jokes aside, being true and authentic here. <clears throat> you are an I want to say elite group of people who got to experience this in a way that is wholly unique to anybody else in the history of time. Right. Because at this point, anybody else that wants, like myself, that wants to get into it, I have access to all of the books, even now with a click of a button, access to all of the movies with extended cuts and bloopers and everything else. Right. All by today or tomorrow. Unless you want to go slow mo it and just like... Maybe you get to have a kid and like only give them a book every two years or something. Oh, you do it like that. But yeah. So so I am in a unique position to where I'm an adult. I have not seen – I've only seen the first one. That was with an ex-wife when it first came out. Mm-hmm. And my knowledge kind of fades from there. So – And I never read the books. That needs to be – that needs to be – That 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 needs to be preface it for this entire conversation because <laughs> – there's My a knowledge. little bit of there's a little bit of give and take between Red and I about things that he saw and comments and I almost thought about we both almost thought about almost recording Twitter style some of his comments as we were watching the movies. That's pretty funny. Obviously, let's let's go on record. I am a fan. Yes. I did not read the books until much later. So I got I think I started reading the books before the final or this the sixth book but the the sixth movie seven eight yeah so the 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 crescendo of you know hey spoilers if you haven't watched it or heard it or read it since then just putting it on you don't have to give uh, spoilers dumbledore dies well i was expecting you just to have a flat out <laughs> blurt now but i started to read the books <laughs> from that point I, sure. I think I, I think I tried to I flirted with audiobooks for a little bit and didn't really like it but I was at the time I was commuting back and forth from work on the train and reading Harry Potter was really convenient and my best friend 
Christy is a big fan, so she basically had the books for me ready to hand over as soon as I got done with nice. me. And it's all Y books, YA books. It's super easy read. However, that some of our contention between myself and Red is he's going purely off of movies, whereas I went off of movies but know the back history of a book and go, okay, yeah, but there's this other thing. Which is the there's these inten- other details. Which is which is the intent of the movies, which is one of my bing point one arguments. Okay. So if you're having these movies come out to reach the broader appeal, at what point do you forego major plot points for lack of thing? I understand trivialities. To be like, yeah, that's in the book, that's in the book, that could stay in the book. But major plot holes from movie specific being left out. And obviously the one I'm going to reference is the the Marauders map. So Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me, give me a second to, to ping your point here. Okay. So I would say in the grand scheme of m- movies that have been – or books that have been made into movies – Harry Potter, along with Lord of the Rings, which I feel like did it either about the same time or later after Harry Potter started its series. I'd have to look at the timing of that. Harry Potter does a really good job of the first three books pretty much being point for point for point on the movies. They were on the longer movies. And they left out points that were relevant to the story, but not important. Case in point, again, number one, Sorting Hat. The Sorting Hat goes on to talk a little bit more about the houses and the meaning behind the houses and more about the houses, where here they just went, yeah, Gryffindor, move on. Like, <laughs> But it makes sense because you don't need to show that in the movie. Like, You kind of, in the movie, already painted your your Slytherin house is kind of stuck your up. Bad so guys, your bad guys. Your bad guys. And the Hufflepuff's house. Neither their house come from, neither a dark wizard has right. ever come from the house of Slytherin. Right. So so they did a good job in that regard, in terms of movie-wise, of painting your protagonist and antagonist and everything right out the gate. And there's some super fans that would disagree with your comment there, because you have your, basically, your two about houses. About the movie? About the movies. Okay. Shoot, sh- uh, providing enough information for all of the houses they provide a big chunk of gryffindor and they provide obviously a big chunk for slytherin right but if unless you read the books you really don't get a good picture of hufflepuff right. and that's, a, that's exactly my point i just thank you for proving my point <laughs> i don't know if we're arguing the same thing here no, no i'm just saying is you you said that the 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 movies do not paint anything about the houses th- okay i the books do. the books go on and talk a little bit more about about what the houses are. That I know just because of Cliff Notes and other things. And again, I have sisters that talk about it. But for a purely movie perspective, it's the movie itself, while it does not have the sorting hat talk about the value of the houses, so to speak, or more about the houses in detail, right. while it does in the book, the movie still, just through atmosphere, just through filming, just through lighting, and just everything is angled to make it very clear it's Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Right. Nothing's mentioned of really the puffs, except for the one little teeny tiny girl that's just like, Hufflepuff, okay, yeah, she skips off. Like, Ravenclaw's not even shown until much later. Yeah. So, I mean, Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff doesn't really get representation until you see either uh, uh, Diggory or Luna. Right. Um, but Ravenclaw is almost not mentioned at all. A, a passing, a passing fancy of uh, Potter, and that's about it. Right, um, but yeah, I can, okay. So I'll see, I'll see to your point one. So, but that's so that's the point I want to emphasize, though. So, if you have at what point can you leave details out? Which again, the movie does a good job of leaving out house details because the movie also through development of the movie itself throughout the, the throughout the three hours of the movie. Paints the houses in other mediums. You don't have the sorting hat going, this is what the houses are and this is what they're about. Right. You actually have the visual medium of going, you know, Malfoy looks like a little shit. Like, he just <laughs> straight up does. You know that's intentional You casting. know that that bully. You Everybody has lived that bully. He may not have had platinum white wizard hair, but you know that bully as soon as you see him. And yeah. you see the, the, the bully's crew 
in many facets, even right. with Dudley and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, la- later on and things like that. But you, the, but you the see way the bullies. They, but for the sure. way they do that is all through visual. It may not have, they may not have been presented that way in the books, but they used other methods in the books to kind of visual to help visualize how the the houses are. You get more of a feeling I, from what I've gathered from the books. You feel that they these characters. Whereas are this a way. movie cuts that to the right. core, and it doesn't have to be like Ron looks like a disheveled mess. A thousand as soon times. as as soon as old dude walks on stage, and you look and you look at Ron, and you go, "Oh, I know what that kid smells like." <laughs> I sat next to him. Just from visual cue alone. Right. So it's, okay. a good, so it's a good job. So the movie does a good job of that. So that is okay to leave out. You don't need to put that in. But when do you, is it okay to leave out major plot points that are very clearly a plot hole that's left to be messed with? My case in point is probably my favorite movie of the whole thing was Prisoner of Azkaban. Which... My my least favorite is that movie. And yet your most favorite is Goblet of Fire. Which is the useless movie of the whole tri- of the whole group. I don't say trilogy, but of the whole setting. Of the whole anthology, I guess. It's a Rue Goldberg machine that does absolutely nothing except sends Harry on a hair raising chase, which you eventually find out doesn't matter. <coughs> like he wasn't gonna lose anyway. Everything was painted to be for him to win. He may have thought he would have lost. But when you find it out as a viewer, you're he like... He was supposed to... Now, keep in mind, he was supposed to lose that night in the graveyard. He was used to bring about the physical embodiment drink of Voldemort. But but no, but he but, won the cup. What do you mean he won the cup? Technically, no, he didn't. S- uh, Diggory won the cup. But they both grabbed it. They both rifted, I guess, teleported to the to the graveyard. Correct. So the game was already over. He won. Everything that happened. Harry every- didn't. Harry didn't win. Technically, Diggory won, but because it was set up to get Harry to the graveyard, yeah, two and a half hours of a setup to get Harry to the graveyard. <laughs> Harry Potter's a nosy little brat. You could throw. A, you could just set a rock down that says, "Harry, do not touch," <laughs> and it's a port key to the graveyard. He would have touched it. He would have been like, "Oh, what's this? It has my name on it." Poof, and he's in the graveyard. Boom, done. Two and a half hours done. He didn't have to go diving into fucking looking for mermaids and everything else. Like, it was it. Done. Done. It tells a cool story. It tells, like, it, there's heroic actions, but even the heroic actions are cheapened with the notion that he wasn't going to lose. There's no, there no way they're going to let him lose because he needed to succeed because he needed to touch the cup because he needed to go to the graveyard so they could bring about he who cannot be named. Are you done? Are you done yet? I would have just stand outside. The kid's learning how to shave. Eventually, he's gonna nick himself. <laughs> <laughs> so at least explain to me why why number three, Prisoner of Azkaban, is your favorite, <laughs> even though it deals with literally the worst thing <clears throat> in any movie world or any time. What is the worst thing? Blueberry muffins. Time plot. Time plot oh, is the time plot worst. Is a, time plot is a number one. It has a. It does a really good job of closing the time loop. I, I will give. You, I, I will concede on that point. It does close the loop because even in the wizarding world, apparently talking to p- snakes is not seen as crazy, or hearing voices in the world <coughs> is crazy. But even in the wizarding world, <clears throat> fucking with time is not a thing you do. Right, but they still close loops, and I think ultimately that is that is the key of. Dealing when it comes to wizarding stuff, or when it comes to what time stuff in general. The problem that you have, and both you and I have, when it comes to time plots or time stories or anything else, is when there's open loopholes, or there's things that are left to like, again, plot holes. Wait, why did this happen? What's going to happen to this? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you still liked Avengers, and that was a big time F. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. And, I mean, and that, and that was actually a sloppy loophole. Because, well, it's sloppy in a sense of in a in a continuity. It's it's a nightmare. Yeah. But for marketing and selling new TV shows, go see Loki on Disney Plus coming up in the next year or two. That is a that show is a result of a of a time loop or of a of a, of a paradox. A, a time paradox. paradox. Yeah. So now that basically created another timeline. That is exactly what you hate. Yet you're excited about it. Yet the one movie that actually 
does it puts a rather nice little bow on a time paradox and a time plot line like leaves comes back and f- solves all the nonsense in between like really does a good job of clean like sweeping the steps behind it and leaving it there like it is a nice it is a it is a close enough isolated time loop that it doesn't feel it's crazy world and the only thing it really affects are the small handful of players that it affected right so your argument of Nobody likes time plot, while valid, because I hate time plot too, when it's put with a nice little bow and very cleanly wrapped up, it's hard to dislike it. It's hard to look at it and go, oh, they they messed up. No, it's I. It's, it's not that I don't dislike Prisoner of Azkaban. It's just that I think there's better movies one does a really good job, obviously, of world building and getting you to like the, the, the characters, including the support characters, which is more my thing. Character development of support characters sure. and we, are always my And we talked about this and you're we watching of uh, Baby Driver. Right. With, uh, with TV's Travis. I don't like no support character development. I don't like non-character development. You're, so, you're a big focus on that. So As much yeah. as I don't necessarily like, I, I, I'll be honest, and people might come at me with this, it's fine. Come at me, bro. I don't, I don't like Harry. I think Harry's a little snot-nosed, arrogant shit. Well, <laughs> but that's the point. But he, still su- he is still supported, and uh, ultimately he's still cared, and he has a big heart cared for by his support characters like Harmony but, but and Ron <clears throat> but that is, that, and the teachers and his mom and dad and all these other people that made him who he was. But that is a sign of good character development. You're taking a character that is complex. It is very human. It is very human to have qualities that make you both a shit <laughs> and good people. Like, right. We've met plenty of them in our life. Like There are people that can be snotty or can be pompous or can be irritating beyond all recognition, but there's also good qualities about them and there's things about them. They could have a big heart. They can be loved by friends or they can bring things to the table. So it becomes more of a case of what are you willing to overlook? So I will go to counter you as far as why I liked Goblet of Fire is because to me, Goblet of Fire became the first book to really a, open up the full world of magic. It wasn't just affecting Hogwarts. It wasn't just about Hogwarts School of Magic. It shows that there's other schools of magic within the community. It showed that there was a a male or a, a men's boarding school versus a female boarding school and what the difference of that in the the paradox or the the, the mixing of the minds that Hogwarts represents. <clears throat> and before you cut me off, because I, I can see you, you doing no, that. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that wasn't nice. I was thinking and I'm trying to see your point. Then there's also the fact of for the Goblet of Fire with the, again, coming about of actual Voldemort to a point where Harry can fight him. Like before that, Voldemort is just a thought. Voldemort is just a, oh, he was eating off unicorn blood in the first one. He was a book in the second one. He was a spirit. He was a non-tangible thing in the first you know, few books in Goblet of Fire, he becomes something that Harry can actually fight. And it starts that actual real story, the full fleshed out, no pun intended, of the story itself of Harry Potter. The only real time, honestly, the only time Harry was in danger was in the second book or in the second movie. Why? Because he got actually cut by the Basilisk? No, if he would have got killed by the Basilisk, that would have just absolutely put an end to Voldemort's plans. He <clears throat> could, mm. yeah. What would have happened if the Basilisk would have went hope? Like, well, Voldemort's kind of in trouble, and Harry's dead. No, he still would have. He he would have eventually. He he would have sucked the life from Jenny and come back as M- Tom Marvel Marvo as basically the younger version of him that he had trapped into the diary. So ultimately, that would have been the best. If we're going multiple endings for Voldemort, you're going on. On, like, old school Chrono Trigger, which, by the way, they just celebrated their 25th birthday for video game stuff. But (coughs) if you're going for multiple endings, Voldemort's best case as Tom Riddle would have been 
Basilisk. Chamber, Chamber of Secrets, killing Jenny, closing the school. Resurrecting and having a nose. <laughs> <laughs> what nose goes <laughs> but am I wrong there? like no, that's, that would have been because everything ultimately. everything else was protect Harry protect Harry protect Harry as much as I want to kill Harry really I need his blood Chamber of Secrets is the only time where I felt looking back at the movie he had literally no control that was at the point where nobody was manipulating him nobody was like that was the point where he could have gotten numbed and been done and been done. And who knows what would have happened with Riddle. I mean, I guess he would have sucked Ginny a lot or sucked Ginny down to become a, I guess, young version of himself again, right. walk around a school with Horcruxes still floating around, which would be interesting because now that's a time paradox in of itself. You're literally resurrecting a memory and turning a memory or part of the memory into it. So, I mean... it. W- I mean, it would have been the Horcrux actually cre- acting as they were supposed to. Bringing them back. So that would have ultimately then, what we just concluded is that that would have been the true ending for Voldemort then. <clears throat> Was Chamber of Secrets, the Basilisk noms no. the crap. Yes, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking of... Um, <clears throat> Chamber of Secrets. Phil- philosopher. Uh, philosopher? Uh, Excuse me, Philosopher. <laughs> I only had one drink. <laughs> Philosopher's Stone. Right, but then nothing was really with that. The big thing was Basilisk would have ate Harry. Harry dead. Ginny gets dead too. Vol- Tom Riddle shows up. because not even Voldemort. Where's his memory at that? Like, I don't know. <clears throat> Obviously, like it, it seemed like he took a younger version of it, or maybe the first Horcrux was created with that one. Yeah, because he was at his he he was older than in the later books that you see when he talks to Slughorn, right? And he learns of the Horcrux magics, <clears throat> but not as old as when he finally got we basically no when he was starting to kill, become the actual Dark Wizard. So he would have started off, had his nose back, <laughs> would have appeared. As a youth. <clears throat> so let's kind of jump ahead here because we're, we're getting a little tangent tangent and you're you're like completely unraveling my childhood here. <clears throat> oh, I you hate it when I'm say, right. I shouldn't say childhood because no. it was much later in life. But you hate it when I'm right. And I love it. So what did you feel? What did you think of uh, about the final <laughs> movie and some change when you actually find out what? Tom's real plan or, or what Voldemort's real plan was of, a, of the Deathly Hollows. Well, again, going specifically off movie. I mean, again, I can't emphasize that more than I already have. Only of my experiences of this whole experience is movie. That said, I could have easily watched a movie about the three brothers and the Deathly Hollows with that animation style. All on its own. Which is interesting you say that because they are planning on in the works for the uh, Bar- Beetle the Bard book, which is where you learn of the Deathly the Hollows. Hollows. And a few other stories. Uh, uh, basically that. the children's books. You, they're planning on making that. So I'm interested to see if they do it like a Spider-Man uh, thing or Spider-Man that, that universe anima- that with anima- a different art. That animation style was so pretty and it told such a fantastic story. Um, it really is the redeeming quality of... Harry Potter goes camping. Well, yeah, you waited two and a half hours to see the little animation bip and then, like, a little bit of a fight at the end with, oh boy, like, Luna's family. And other than that, like, all right, deuces, bro. I mean, character development, I could see as a kid, it kind of, or a, a young adult being a little bit more touching because it does play that. Will he do they? Oh, they're jealous. Do they love him? Oh, he likes her type stuff with between her mind. Basically the trio, the menage a trois over here. Um, so it makes sense because I'm sure there's some 13 to 15 year old that had similar emotions or, well, my best friend is seeing this girl or this guy and I feel this way about it. So I could see the relate there as 30 something as three X years old. Like, <laughs> like, okay. You kids have no idea. Like, I'm waiting for... Yeah, no. Um, so that whole scene, as much as I appreciate it for being the try-to-be character development, which is your big thing, it was definitely like, okay, who cares? Like, you're, you've, you've pushed this climactic point with everything crumbling down 
to like a month and some change of them meandering in the woods. Like, oh, uh, you had me and then you lost me for a bit. Okay. Then the last movie obviously was the clearly action packed finale sequel of all the craziness. I mean, what do I think of Voldemort's ultimate plan? Uh, kind of haphazard, I guess, because all he wanted was the, 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 the wand. Makes no, again, book, movie, different. No mention, no interest in looking for the cloak. No mentress, no interest looking for the Resurrection Stone. I wanted the wand so he could hold it really bizarre in his, like, monkey grip. <laughs> He's got a really nasty monkey grip. That's why he lost a fight. He doesn't know how to grip his wand. (laughs) So, I, looking at it through, trying to look at it through your eyes as far as a movie. And that's the problem we're always going to have. Is is I have more knowledge than you do. It's just, again, I think it was such an interesting, even watching it while you were talking and I was counting down the Horcruxes. You had a feeling that Harry's scar was going to be I something. Thought, I thought the scar was either a Horcrux or a connection. Like, that was the connection. It wasn't right. even hit. Like, like, it was almost a removal thing. Like It was a separate thing. Yeah. But you, <clears throat> and obviously, again, between the, the final two movies, you learned that, no, Voldemort didn't have a freaking clue either. That he had created a Horcrux that night with the manglings of magic, right. basically from the mom. Which means all of the other movies with any attempt that, especially that first, your favorite scene of in the graveyard, would have ended poorly anyway. Because if Voldemort would have landed the and would have hit. How'd that go again? You hit loop, it's all good. <laughs> and would have hit Harry, like. It would have been like, blam, and fell back over and be like, oh, dude, what happened? Yeah. So, ultimately, he ends up, Voldemort ends up, because mm. he he is so power-focused, he ends up creating his own, his own demise, basically, because as soon as he mixes his blood, he's no longer, it doesn't have a shit to do with the wand. Mm. It has everything to do with he could no longer kill Harry until they had that final final duel. Right. And it didn't matter what wand versus what wand. But he couldn't even kill Harry in that final du- duel. Because he killed Harry in the final duel and it backfired. Because he made himself, because, because he was brought about by his own blood. So had he gone and gotten his blood from either Peter Pettigrew or Diggory, but his own ego meant he had to take it from Harry, mm-hmm. ultimately that's that was always going to be Voldemort's downfall. But and that's did why it have to be taken from Harry? I thought during No, it the, didn't. The, the I thought it did it. The, the, no, the riddle was, the riddle in the graveyard was no, he bones put, from he put Barty Crouch Jr. in charge of bringing Harry because he wanted to make Harry be part of his own resurrection. Got it. And that's ultimately why at the end you see Harry drop the resurrection stone, which I will put put in point on your side of things. It why was really weird that? of dry the stone. So right. now in the haunted fo- forest, there's the resurrection stone that's going to be there and be stumbled on upon. Do you want haunted the- forests? <laughs> this is how you get haunted forests. Forest. So they, ultimately that's why Harry drops it is because he knows he doesn't want to use it or give it to an opportunity for the bad sure. guy to get it. But you just put Again, it back I just in a circle snitch. back to don't ever let the bad guy monologue. Well, yeah, you just put it back in a snitch. Like it's how you put it back in a snitch and you hide it someplace or whatever. It's just, yeah, a lot of, and maybe that's me playing a rogue and maybe that's just my mindset of like, how do I, I don't want to say game the rules or game everything, but how do I like. Stay observant to things because that's a, and a, but and I guess that's the one good thing about the movies and watching them is and you you picked it out as I was verbalizing it very clearly verbalizing things. I like noticing a lot of the little things. I like noticing the background stuff. I didn't know um, Lupin was a werewolf. Like I kind of put the name together. I was like Lupin. Okay, it's usually a wolf thing. But then as soon as the uh, was it the cupboard with the um, what are they called? The, the dig on your fears. Oh, yeah. Um, 
I, I, I have Harry Potter fans yelling at me right now, and I can't think of it. But yes, and then the, the Bo- fo- Bogarts, the, the Bogarts, yeah, and it shows up as your greatest fear. And Lupin steps in a way in front of the, Dement- the air quote Dementor, and it immediately turns into an air quote full moon, and then gets turned into a balloon. I just looked. I'm like, oh, he a woo woo. <laughs> He a woo woo. That makes sense. His name Lupin. Got it. I thought maybe he was like a wolf thing or something else, like a tide with wolves. I did not think he was just a straight out woo woo. So, um, ultimately, I think Harry Potter story by itself and the individual story within the world is great. It serves a purpose. It serves a good versus evil. Good always triumphs. Yeah, it might suck, and yeah, you might lose stuff along the way, but ultimately, good will always triumph. I love the world. The world building within it is is part of Star Wars. Like, I, I mean, I will, I will give you one hundred percent that. I would have liked to seen more of the world, like as much as you're talking is about still being <clears throat> built, minus fair rowling making random claims of stuff but yeah. the world is still being built the world is still being shaped by other artists and, and authors and events which would which would be really good to see again i didn't get like okay there's the all girls french school and the all boys nordic slavic, Russian, slavic Russian, yeah. whatever the, they're i think they're slavic um schools I mean, then there's the American schools with Fantastical Beasts, which your, that your was Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff as as a. Uh, oh, you are just failing! I, am. What is I going really on? am. It's late. Um, yep, not editing this. This is staying <laughs> in. This is your problem. <laughs> oh, I can't think of his name. Who are you thinking of? Oh, the guy from Fantastic Beasts. Uh, yes. Um, I don't freaking know his name. <laughs> Bird? Bird? Isn't it like a one-digit name or one-syllable name? I can't think of it. I'm going to get so many people mad at me. Uh, you can just like use your phone. It's right ahead. there. I can stall for you. I can keep stalling for you. I'm not stalling for you anymore. No. Um, I mean, yeah, they have him. Well, they also have the houses for Americans, too. Mm-hmm. I know there's like the Thunderbirds is one of the house, which I guess is supposed to be like the, the equivalent of the Gryffindor, but not really because there are also houses of different... Newt Scarmander. Newt. But I know the house is also like done in a way where they're akin to the uh, to the English houses, but also still individually different. It's not like, oh, the Thunderbird house is the same as the Gryffindor house. Like it's different traits being emphasized and more American traits, which is, you know, Americans are very obviously different from the English for more than just accents and beliefs, but like. There are personal traits and tendencies that we have. Right. So it, it makes sense to have the houses of, of those mages, kind of, or those wizards. I, look at me using mages. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. I mean, ultimately for me, from a, mo- a movie-only sp- uh, perspective, and I'm sure we'll dance on this topic in the near future as well, as a only mu- uh, movie perspective, it looks good from afar. The more you zoom in and the more you squint, you start noticing the holes in the tapestry because again why did they not use the marauders map to find out that you know who the rat really was well and, ultimately they do find out who the rat really was because he they finds out peter Pettigrew was the, the traitor yeah but he would have but he would have but they would have seen more they would have seen they would have or even found uh mad eye moody when he was locked in the uh, box, in the box for a while, and again, that's just purely movie. In the movie, he has his map, and then he never uses it. In the book, from what you told me, Mad Eye Moody or as Barty as, as Barty, Barty Crouch Junior. Barty Crouch Junior. takes the map from him as Mad Eye, and like, oh, you shouldn't use it. It's dangerous. Blah blah blah. Because he's obviously covering his own tracks. Literally, ha ha, wink wink. But from a purely movie perspective. That is that question I asked at the beginning of when is it okay to omit a very obvious plot hole, which could have been an easy 30 second scene, could have been a super easy scene of, ah, I need the map, blah, 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 take it away. But would have been too much of a visual cue, too much of a visual giveaway, because that's one thing that we talked about too, of 
the movie is not good at covering its tracks. They they zoom in on areas too long. They 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 show their a foreshadowing necklace. is a little very very, very blatant. blatant. It's very like oh they're gonna zoom in on the neck the Deathly Hallows necklace on Luna's father. And like, you obviously know that that's important at that point. Yeah, you see it a couple times and then they zoom in and they linger and you're like okay well clearly that's an important symbol like. And it could, again, and could again, be for young you audiences. you got to remember, it's for, ultimately, it's for young audiences and people that are of the younger... Uh, persuasion? Persu- like, they, they decided the, to be young? <laughs> younger persuasion <laughs> that are, again, passionate about the world. Uh, again, as an adult who watched it, I enjoyed it. It was cool. Uh, I'm happy to have finally been able to understand what people are about. Put that Nick in your, your nerd card. I got, my, I, got, I got my nerd punch card. I could finally get one of the major punches out. Um, I will have to read the books at some point. I think I will end up probably going out and picking up the books just to just a support. Flesh out. Flesh out the bits. Um, support the, the series and everything else. Like, it's a really cool series. It's something that it'd be good to have and somebody that hasn't read it. I would loan it to people. But yeah, read it. It's actually a really good series. Like, we're kind of getting to the point where it's almost cliche. Mm -hmm. Because it is a, oh God, Harry Potter. You're almost getting to the point of, and I know my best friend Chrissy, as I specified earlier, is a huge fan. She's almost got the almost pushback from her her kid, Chase, who doesn't like Harry Potter and kind of... Pushes back against it because it's oh it's not that's, cool. It's that's my parents like that. Sure. What what the, what what is that? I mean, we're starting to hit that age where, that, you know, it came. The first book was in ninety four. I think so. I think that's what we we deciphered when the last time we checked it out. So give or take mid nineties. Uh yeah, chances are if you're reading that in ninety four, you're four twelve fourteen. Right. So. You are 40 years old by now. Chances are you've got a kid that's already... Or at least in reading age. Beyond reading it, yeah. Realistically, you can have a kid a minimum at reading age. I can see the pushback. I can see the... No, that's... That's, that's my parents' That's crap. baby stuff. I don't yeah. care about wizards. I want guns or I want, you know... Fortnite. Fort, oh, Fortnite. Do the floss dance. Anyway... So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about um, more Harry Potter stuff or any other thing that might come up. Obviously, we encourage you guys, because this is going to kind of open a can of worms for any of our listeners that are Harry Potter fans. Send questions. Send some things. Again, let's, let's put this out on the table for things to talk about. Dusty White has read the books and has seen the movies multiple times. I have only seen the movies once through (laughs) so there could have been things i've missed there could have been things i should look for if i decide to watch it again or at least just reel back and catch some things and maybe there's questions that will only affect me because i've got a limited knowledge right um or questions that specifically affect you or could be a pitting question between us based on my limited knowledge or rather the world of what was painted through me for me through um, a, a cinema level, where the world for you is both either cinema or books. novel or both. Fill it out. Right. I mean, hell, nobody ever said Hermione had to be white, right? So, as we like to say around here, we are all geeks. To be otherwise may very well mean to live without passion. Yo, Wizard Harry, night. Good night. Thank you for listening to another episode of Grey Muscle Geekery with Dusty Red and Dusty White. You can support our continued geekery at our Patreon website, patreon.com slash graymuzzlegeekery. Be sure to check back often as we start to add geek cred levels. You can send your questions and comments to us at graymuzzlegeekery at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at graymuzzlegeek. We can be found on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Buzzsprout. And a special thank you to Pepper Coyote for our intro theme. And if you like what you heard, you can find more of his stuff on Spotify, Patreon, or directly from his Bandcamp page.